<laughs> uh, you're not funny today. You're not funny. What's going on, everybody? Hope everybody's enjoying this beautiful Sunday. First, I just want to thank everybody for wishing me a happy birthday, man. We we appreciate that. It was had a good good time. Uh, also, if you are a six two three member. I need you to make sure you attend our September the 25th meeting. It is very, very, very important. I know we have been hearing a lot of nonsense over the last uh, few weeks and few months. All right, let's see if my man is on here, Brother Matt. I don't see him on here yet. Yeah, so we appreciate that yesterday, man. Um, all the birthday wishes and, and the people still wishing me birthday uh, wishes. Appreciate you guys. Uh, what's this here? Okay, here we go. I'm getting ready to start. All right, brother, brother Matt, coming on in. Again, 623 members, September the 25th, 11 a.m. Man, we need you guys to come out, come out, come out, come out. It's very, very important um, that you guys come out to this meeting. Um, what's up, Brother Matt? What's going on with you, brother? What's happening, man? How you doing? How you doing? Uh, the, uh, the real question is, how are you doing, man? How, uh, how was your 30th birthday? Ah, huh, 30th. I, I like that. It was good. <laughs> Just got to add, add, add a couple more years of that, but it was good, man. It was good stuff, man. Had a hey, good time. You, you ain't got to let them know, man. You could have just rolled with it. You're right. You're right. <laughs> You're right. You're right. So well, before I'm glad we, you had a good time. Thank you. So before we get started, since you're a new, a new guest, a, a brand new guest, um, I often start this uh, with our new guest. I start with this question. So, sure. um the title of this show is a vision for victory, right? And it, and it comes from one of my favorite scriptures where it talks about where there is no vision that people perish. So I'm going to ask you, since this is your first time, I always ask the first time guests, what does that mean to them? So I'm going to ask you, what does, um, when there is no vision that people perish, what does that mean to you? You have to have something to be striving towards, man. Like, you know, we as human beings do not do well with aimlessness. It leads to restlessness. And, uh, you know, uh, restlessness leads to anxiety and uh, anxiety leads to people acting in, in fear and despair, man. Okay. And, uh, I like yeah, that. You, you, you got to have, you got to have, some, I think we as a human species got to have some vision. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just, uh, just to continue to move forward, man. We, we don't sit still well. Uh, the question is just what that vision is. There you go. So tell everybody about yourself, man, and, um, you know, what local you come from and, and, and what made you get involved in this Article 40 um, article. So just tell everybody about yourself real quick before we get into the, the meat and potatoes. Yeah, sure, man. Uh, my name is Matt Capagrani. I am a part-time uh, ramp and, and sort employee at... Uh, the UPS operation at the McGee Tyson Airport. Uh, I'm also a steward for my shift, and I am a proud member of Teamsters Local 519 in Knoxville, Tennessee. And uh, you know what? What can I say about uh, about what I'm trying to do, man? I'm, I'm just trying to fix Article 40, man. The whole thing is a mess. Yes, just an, an yes. absolute mess. And and uh, you know for. I imagine many of your members know because the the Philly Air Center is out there that Article 40 covers um, you know all air work, workers at UPS. But 
you know, for any, anyone who might be listening who, uh, who, who does not know that, uh, maybe for some other uh, people in other sections of the company or don't, don't have to deal with that hardly at all, if ever, and may not, you know, be all that aware about it. And um, so it covers, you know, part-time and full-time ramp and sort workers, uh, air drivers and air walkers, and Article 40 has been a problem for a really long time. Yes. So let's get right into it. So Article 40 is like you uh, explained, it, it deals with air employees at UPS. Now, 224s, you know, there was a big uproar, and which it should be, but Article 40 has been around for so, so long and has been a problem for um, our UPS workers for so, so long as well. Unfortunately, it has never been fixed. Um, hopefully, with the new administration, um, they can attack this article. Um, the chairman of Article 40 is Vice President um, James Wright. He's the vice president at large. He's also the president of Local 822. And, uh, and, and everybody that's listening, especially to our 623 members, I have invited uh, Brother Wright to come to our November meeting because I know that this Article 40 is uh, a problem, has been a problem, and we want to hear from him um, as well as help him and the rest of the GEB to fix this article. Uh, as, as well as any other article, 224s, harassment, subcontracting. But today we want to talk about Article 40. So from my experience, because like you said, I am in the, uh, I come from the Philly airport. I, I've always worked there, um, started there part-time, became full-time. Um, so for all those people who don't know, um, if you are an air employee, your daily guarantee is smaller than everybody else's for an example uh, uh, at our at our shift our midnight shift and day shift the daily guarantee is three hours preload and that's if you that's if you've got one right that's if you got one right because glad you brought that up because some people don't even have a daily guarantee like my brother here see that's why that's why this article has to be removed from this contract it is so it's so crazy. Go ahead, brother. Man. I know you wanted to say something. I hear you. I see you. Well, I, I, I was just uh, I was just showing a hand to, uh, uh, to to rep the folks out there without a guarantee, man. You, you know what? You know what time my shift starts? What time? It starts. It starts at seven p.m. You know what time the plane takes off? What time? Nine fifty-one. Wow. You think? Do you think that's by accident? No, it's not. That's no. by design, brother. Yep. But you, you're right, though, because because some some um, I believe in the Atlantic area, I believe they don't have uh, their 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 air employees don't have um, a guarantee. And I don't want to misspeak, but I do remember reading when we was down there because that's where our panel was at. I believe it it, it depends on if the shift works over three hours in what is it, a 30 day period or something like that right. i've got a pending grievance on this right now going to the national air committee in october yeah so yeah it, this this thing is bad dude but also for our full-time air drivers we got our brother here nick regeria who's been an advocate here for this this article he's i think he's watching now um and i think um you and him had some conversation about article 40 because he is yes we have yeah, he is an advocate for getting rid of this article. Um, and I know you and I talked about some discussion about, you know, what would that look like if we got get, if we got rid of it or if we change it to make it better for everybody. Um, there's, there's some push and pull. There's going to be some discussion. And again, I hope that, you know, Brother Wright and his team and, and, and the rest of us can do something to to, to fix that article or get rid of it completely but that's going to be something that is going to have to be talked about yeah at some point and you know the the conventional wisdom at least is that it's easier to build on what you got than to scrap and start over uh but you know when you have an article like this when it's just wrought with so many problems and it really does beg the question you know 
whether or not uh, it, we, we, we should just scrap it. But, you know, then the question would be, well, what exactly would that look like? And mm -hmm. I, I look forward to, uh, to having a conversation with you and with others about that. Absolutely. So, so take us through the article, piece by piece, <laughs> yeah, line sure, by man. line. Um, and I love yeah. the graphics that you have put up. Um, and I'm working on um, one of the brothers, Dean Doss, out in the West Coast. Shout out to him. He, he told me that we could actually use Zoom to stream this. So I just opened up a Zoom account. So hopefully when we move further on in this discussion later on, maybe a couple of weeks from now, next month, I'll be able to Zoom the, the conversation on Facebook. And then we can bring more and more people on and everybody can watch and we can talk about it together. So I'm working on that. Now, I didn't know you could do that, but I'm glad them brothers told me that. So we're going to do that next time. Yeah, that'd be great, man. Yeah, Dean uh, Dean was a real help to me in, uh, early on in this and helping me connect to, to resources. So, you know, the more folks that we can get in on this conversation, I think the more it's, the more it's going to benefit the conversation. Absolutely. So let's walk us through it, brother. Walk us through this. Yeah, sure, man. You know, we already talked a little bit about the three hour guarantee and I don't want to spend too much time on it, but I do want to stump on this for a little bit, man, because like there's there's some there's some elements of this thing that's just messed up. So, you know, uh, like you stated, I would I would say the majority of air hubs and gateways, you know, they're working three or, or a bit more than three hours, you know, but but there are a minority of us who are not. And yeah. You know, excuse my French, man, but the requirements to, uh, to establish this thing, if you don't have it, they're bullshit. Yes, absolutely. And, and the re and so, so here's the requirements to establish it. If you don't have it, 80% of your shift has to work three or, three or more hours in 30 out of 45 working days, uh, you know, which doesn't sound all that onerous at face value, right? And until, uh, you, until you stop to consider that what's backwards about this is that the company holds all the cards, man. Like they are in sole possession of the employee time cards. And so like, you know, you can file an information request to get those, but you know, technically the company doesn't have to provide anything unless it's pegged to a relevant grievance. So all, already automatically right off the bat, uh, you've, you've tipped your hand to let them know what it is exactly that you're trying to do by filing. And then, if, as if that's not bad enough, you have to file to try to establish it before you actually know whether you've met the requirements or not yet. Unless, I don't know, unless they expect us stewards to keep track of all of my coworkers' time clocks by hand, brother. Right. Which ain't happening. Right. So, uh, yeah, this is manifestly unfair, and we want rid of all of it. We want the same three and a half hour guarantee as ground hubs. There should be no requirements to meet this. You show up to work on time as scheduled and you get your guarantee. Absolutely. So I know we had a contract meeting here in our local back in uh, March and shout out to all the part timers that came out, man. I'm telling you, I, I can see um, a rejuvenation in the part timers all around the country yourself been a part-timer, yourself also been a steward. You know, not many years ago, um, this wouldn't have happened. But I think part-timers have had enough of Kara Tomei and, and the company, and they're starting to speak out, and which is a good thing. So at our meeting, we actually had a whole section, two or three tables full of part-timers talking about these issues of daily guarantees and, and hourly wages. And one of the biggest things that our part-timers were talking about was what you just mentioned, was a larger guarantee. And that will fix a lot of the issues, well, I'm going to say a lot of the issues in Article 40, but it will fix a, a, a big problem in Article 40, which, which will make the um, daily guarantee equitable for all part-timers. Like you said, don't come in, you know, and you have to work, like you said, 30 and 45 days, 80% of the shift all this other kind of dumb stuff, everybody comes in on time, you get your guarantee. But we need to make sure that we even take that three and a half and make it more to even four hours. You know what I mean? And not just three or three and a half. Because a lot of these, a lot of these, these, these hubs, they work their um, part-timers more than four and five hours. And then what they do is when they, when they have to go home or go to another job, they want to treat them like part-timers. 
You know, I mean, right. uh, they want to treat them like full timers. So I should say, well, I'm part time. I have another job. If you want me to be work full time uh, hours, give me a full time job. And that's right. something. And that's something that we need to 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 fix too, in a part time world. Well, I want to speak a little bit about this to a minute because this is related to something that doesn't directly fall under Article 40, but, you know, um, it's, it's indirectly related to it. So I'm going to talk about it anyway, because uh, Article 40 affects it. And, and uh, one of the things that, you know, getting a, 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 at least a three and a half hour guarantee is going to do uh, is that it's going to make all part time employees eligible for a full year of service credit in the part time pension under the requirements laid out in the National Master. Uh oh, what I just do? Oh, I just did something. I don't know what I did. Oh, what did I do? <laughs> Hold on, people. I think I hit I hit a button here by accident. We're gonna bring it right back. I don't know what I just hit. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, I hit something. I don't even know what I hit. Okay, here we go. I got canceled. <laughs> yeah, I don't, even, I, I don't even know how I did that, but all right, let me, let's go back good, to it. Man. Sorry about that. But no, no, you're fine, man. Um, yeah, so, um, you know, th what that's going to do is, uh, you know, th that's going to allow everybody uh, to, to receive a full year service credit in the pension. Now, if you look at the, the, the language on it in the master, you know, there's a sliding scale where you have to meet 750 hours annually to get credit for a full year in the pension. And then if you work a little less, you get 75% credit. And then if you work a little less than that, you get 50%. And then if you work too little, you get no credit at all, which I don't necessarily have an issue with this sliding scale because, you know, you're always going to have some folks who are just not going to work that much in a year simply due to the fact that, you know, like FMLA and disability leave. So that's got to stay. Uh, but, uh, you know, what you can't do is dangle the part-time pension in front of people who can never reasonably expect to attain it. Like what they do to the AM shift in my building is absolutely criminal. They work those people for like two hours and then they tell them to get lost. And there should just never, ever be a situation in which uh, a UPS employee wants to work and then they have to work for UPS for 40 years to hit a pension milestone. Copy. You're you're right. You're right. I agree with that. And listen, there's a lot of lot of things that need to be fixed in this article. Um, I want to talk about like brothers like Nick Regeria, who's a full time um, combo air driver and uh, inside worker now. Yeah, to let's me, talk this about is, the drivers a little bit. Yeah, this 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 to me is one of the most insane things. I, I just don't, I just don't, I don't, I don't get this scenario. And why would the union agree to this? Now check this out. And I know, you know, <laughs> I know, I know. So for everybody who doesn't know. i my brain trying to figure it out for the last bit, man. Right. It's just, I can't come up with a good answer for some of these. Right. Like, what were these people thinking on some I have, of this stuff? I have no idea. So I'm a full-time combo, uh, uh, article two, two, three. By half of my shift, I'm inside. But the other half of my air driver. Now watch what the company does. They split your they split your rate in in two. But what do you mean they split your rate in two? So you'll get your 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 driving rate, and then you'll get your inside part time part time rate. It's unbelievable. I have no idea why the company was split. Well, the union and and the company agreed to that because I remember. We had one brother. He's no longer. Um, he's no longer a uh, combo air driver now. He's an actual full blown two two three. It's a shame I had to say a full blown two two three when you were talking about this. But he left that because his rate would drop almost half. So he would make like twenty eight dollars air rate air driving rate, but then drop down to like fourteen fifteen dollars in his inside rate. That's that's insane. You're full time. Why are you making two separate rates as a full time employee? That's another thing that needs to be fixed. So what's your thoughts on that? I, and I know let 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 not the members hear your thoughts because I already know how you feel about it. But everybody else that's gonna watch this, let them know how you feel about it. 
Man, you got to think about this stuff from the company's perspective because that's who we're going to be arguing against. And they have already demonstrated a willingness to get rid of split rates with 22 force. There is no argument here. Air drivers deserve a single rate of pay. The only issue is, is that for the inside folk or for the folks who have been there long enough to work, uh, you know, that they're getting a higher pay rate inside, right. you want to make sure that there isn't anybody who's going to suffer as a result for the minority of people who make more inside than they do driving. And that's why another thing that I've focused, I've uh, made, made, uh, taking great care to focus on is the fact that air driver pay is absolutely abysmal. When this article was created in 1987, uh, air driver start pay was 950. If you run that through an inflation calculator, man, like the start pay for air drivers should be $24 today. And now is still 15 for part timers and it's 17 for full timers. We got to get air drivers and air workers more broadly paid their worth, man. Like air, everybody knows, or at least they should know, air is where the money's at. That's where the money uh, is at. There's more, there's more ground volume. I will say that. So, the, so ground does produce more revenue just through volume. But in terms of revenue per package, the packages that we handle uh, on a daily basis, we make double the money. Right. Than ground does. And we are very important and, and, and a very key uh, component of this company's uh, business plan and vision. And it's time for people to start acting like it. But we got to educate them. There you go. And that's the purpose of this this video. And, and, I, and I'm glad that you created the Article 40 website to get more and more people engaged and uh, and educate educated on this article like Nick Rodrigo just posted just now. I get paid $16 less an hour on his inside job. Just think about that for a minute. He's a full-time employee. He's a full-time employee making $16 less on one of his shifts. How is that even possible? I don't think any other classification has to deal with this problem, Richard. No, no, they don't. Not not a sixteen dollar pay, you know, just decrease sixteen dollars. How was? I, but again, that's why we need to talk about it. And I get the other articles, the two two fours. That you know, they get the spotlight and 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 all this stuff, and we and we get that. But what about our brothers and sisters who have been in this classification for years, for decades, and and had to deal with getting, like Nick says. His pay drops to sixteen dollars when it goes to his hub his hub side job. Now, that that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. It is. So we need to um, get with, um, like I said, brother brother Wright, um, his, his committee, and I think what we should do is it just maybe. Um, uh, have a meeting with him or somehow email him all our questions and concerns. And I know that um, at, after speaking to him uh, several times, he, he understands the problems and the issues that we face with this. And he's committed to, to, to fixing them. But again, he's going to need some help. He's going to have to hear mm -hmm. from brother Matt, brother Nick, and everybody else that's, that's, you know, suffering from this article. You know, if you are an air employee, um, you should go out your way and educate yourself on this Article 40. Reach out to your stewards, your, your, your business agents, whoever, and let's come up with a plan to, to fix this article. Either fix it or get rid of it. To me, and you and I talked about this privately, uh, they need to scrap it all together. Um, no no full-time employee should be making split wages. No part-timer should be um, you know, making have a less of a guarantee just because they do air. And, and, and the holidays. The holidays. Just the six punch, man. Like it's ugly. Holidays it's a six no punch. Like air drivers ugly. deserve a six punch. It's it's ugly, dude. It's it's ugly. Um we, we need to make sure our people know what's going on. Like James mm -hmm. Hughes, James Hughes is a feeder driver now. He's also a trustee 
on our board. Um, he, he used to be an air driver. And, you know, and this was years ago. And it's still not fixed. So we have a lot of work to do. And Brother Matt, again, I appreciate you for your commitment to fixing this. And the fact that you are a part-timer, man, it, it gives, me, gives me a lot of hope. Because we always talk about what part-timers don't do. And what they they're not going to vote and da 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 and all this other dumb stuff. But you are showing that we have to encourage our part timers, engage them, talk to them, you know, because you guys outnumber us like four to one. You got in, in all actuality, and I know a lot of full timers and people who make a whole lot of money they don't want to hear this. You guys control everything just by sheer numbers. But we just got to get you guys to come up to the front. I don't buy this whole argument, man, that, that because the turnover is high, that, that we can't be organized, man. I think yeah. that there just needs to be a concerted and coordinated push to specifically engage people as part-timers. Yeah, I agree. And um, UPS takes advantage of – listen, UPS takes advantage of the Teamsters. They take advantage of the, the, the division and the fractions, especially UPS teams, just between part-timers and full-timers. They, they know how to attack us better than anybody, and, then, and we don't help them. And that's why I'm so glad that we, you and I are doing this because this is how we show the company that we, we, we're becoming united. You know, what we saw on August 1st, the whole week of August 1st, with everybody participating in the days of action, we're showing the company that you know, we're coming for them next year. We're not, we're not waiting around and let them throw the first punches. No, we, we're throwing the punches now. You know, part-timers and officers, part-timers and feeder drivers, feeder drivers and air workers, air workers and air drivers, air walkers and sorters. We all coming together to fight Kara Tomei and, and all her. And then she's in the truck the other day loading the truck up. Come on, man. Yes. <laughs> Man, yeah. that's, that's what this project is, uh, as much as anything, man, is that, you know, I want to organize all the part-timers. The only thing is, is that I just, I just simply do not have the resources for that large of an undertaking by myself. But I took a look at things and I said, but you know what I think I could do? I think I could organize the air workers and the air workers yeah. are primarily part-time. And that's then right. if I did that, and then I demonstrated that through that, that when when you actually that, that that it actually can be done, that it would be a positive and a constructive indictment of of the the the, the ground part timers being like, look, the air part timers can do it, can't you all? Can, right, that's right. So we had a conversation, I believe, a couple of days ago, and I want to bring it to this format here. So we were talking about either scrapping it or fixing it, and I like what you were saying in our conversation. So. Your thoughts, if we were to scrap Article 40, what problems or, or well, I know, that I, I know there would be some problems because, like you said, you want to build on something that you have. But what mm -hmm. problems do you see if we would just say, you know what, let's scrap the whole article? What would be one of the problems by doing that? Well, I want to use this opportunity to, to uh, you know, I'll get to exactly what I think, but I want to use this opportunity to give voice to the anxiety that I hear from the air drivers concerning this, because if you scrap something, then, you know, practically speaking, what that results is at least the temporary elimination of, of the positions that are outlined under Article 40. It makes air hub and gateway workers more or less on par with, you know, with, with, with ground. But, you know, as far as the air drivers go, they would need to be reclassified. And, you know, uh, you know, in, in, from what I'm from what I'm hearing from the feedback uh, that I'm getting from a lot of air drivers is that they they have to feel that there is more reward than risk in that because they don't know exactly what that would look like, and so you know they would need greater clarification about you know uh, the, the essentially that they weren't going to get squeezed in that process because I think uh, most most air drivers want to be air drivers for a reason. They don't want to become uh, RBCDs. And so, uh, you know, uh, what a lot of them are telling me is that it would be worst case scenario is that they would collapse the distinction between air and ground drivers. And it just becomes like a regular bid that goes to top seniority, uh, you know, for, for, for drivers. 
Um, and then there's also the issue of, you know, whether or not the company wants to continue to create uh, air, air driver positions, because, you know, if it doesn't make financial sense to them, they will move to try and eliminate them. And if that happens, uh, you know, in that case, I see it as my job to ensure that air drivers have the best possible chance to get red circled and be allowed to work their present jobs out until they either leave or retire. Got you. Got you. So what if, so how will we go about fixing it? So the one thing we just talked about was scrapping the whole article. Mm -hmm. Let's say we keep it, right? How can we fix it? Of course, making the, um, of course, making the, the daily guarantee for everybody four hours, the air drivers um, making the same rate as they would if they would, you know, the, the air driving rate, not their inside rate. Um, that, that has to be fixed. Um, I think those two are the biggest issues. Um, I don't know, uh, maybe you can, you can educate me on the other parts of it. Um, to, to me, those are the two biggest things. Of course, the six punches and the holiday mm -hmm. pay and all that kind of stuff needs to be fixed and addressed. Is there anything else that you could see out of those, outside of those big four things that we can fix it to make it uh, um, a more equitable article for everybody? That's, that's, that falls under that article. A more equitable article for everybody, you know, I, I'd say it's perfectly reasonable to get 24 hour notice for the changing of start times. Uh, let, me, let me take a, take a look here. Um, you know, we already talked about the six punch and the OT after five for, mm -hmm. for, for part timers, uh, getting more equitable pay uh, yes. that is relative, that is relative to our worth. Um, you know, and, and surely we're open to additional suggestions. That's another thing that I want to emphasize is that this isn't all figured out yet. And we need part, uh, participation. We need as much of it as possible. We need people who are willing to make suggestions and help us come up with creative solutions because the stuff that we submit to the international has to be solid. We need to give them stuff that they can potentially adopt. Um, and, and so we need people on that front. And I think an additional thing that we need is additional clarification of you know what is gonna what could happen with the 22-4 situation because you know these a lot of air drivers have especially PM air drivers have been displaced by 22-4s right uh, they are they've not been using 22-4s properly they were supposed to, uh, uh, to to work to help partly on the sort and then also to relieve drivers from excessive overtime. And now because they don't have split rate, you know, Carol Tome took a look and said, look, we can just use these as regular drivers for cheap and keep them on the road as much as possible. And so they moved those Dropbox times back on PM Air and now it's just 22 force handling them. And, uh, you know, with, with, with that situation, we need additional clarification of, you know, what the reclassification of all those folks would look like because this is a big puzzle. Everything yes. that happens with one person is going to affect another and people need to be aware of that and they need to be reasonable and they need to start thinking about people other than just themselves because, uh, you know. There you go. Yeah. There you go. There you go right there. You said it right there. Um, we, we as a union have to come together on all of these issues just because I may not be a air driver. Um, or you may not be a feeder driver. It doesn't mean that we don't have issues and we need to work together. Your issue may not be my issue and your issue may not be mine, but we have to work together in order to fix all of our issues. And for a long, long time, as we talked about earlier in this show, Article 40, man, has been put on the back burner and it gets worse and worse. And then when they put in the 224s, like you just mentioned, they come in and take the work from the air drivers, the PM drivers. Um, I know, um, I think now some locals do have language um, that protects um, air workers, uh, air drivers and, you know, for the 224s not to be able to come over. Uh, unfortunately, we weren't in the office and, you know, uh, at 623 when our, when our contract supplement was negotiated last time. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done in our supplement. And I'm quite sure there's supplements everywhere that need to have some type of uh, readjusting and fixing, especially when it comes to these air employees, because 
again, um, about 75% of my local are part-time. And of that, and of that block, uh, I would say about 2,000 workers in my in my local union are affected by article 40 because our biggest shift is our midnight shift at the airport and that has about 1800 people and then the day shift at the airport has about 200 people that's 2000 people affected by this article they're not getting the same guarantee as everybody else um all these things holidays six punches all that stuff they're affected by air drivers are affected by it so we need to work together and get rid of all this stuff, the 224, the Article 40. There's a lot of things that we need to talk about in order to get the contract everybody deserves, not just the people who are affected by the 224s or the Article 40, subcontracting everybody, everybody. So uh, what I'm going to do, and I'm, I'm going to say this here, I'm going to reach out to, to Brother Wright, and I'm going to afford him your number and have him reach out to you so you guys can talk about this because I know Nick has spoken to him a couple of times, but um, we can no longer just talk about it, man. We got to be about action now. And um, what you are doing is great. It's powerful. Um, you're bringing something to, to the table that, you know, a lot of people don't even know about. If you ask, even if you ask the people who are affected by this article, they don't know anything about it. You know what I mean? And that's where we have to have these conversations, man. But I, I'm going to reach out to him and have him, you and him talk about what you see, what he sees. And like Nick said, you you need to be on that Article 40 committee, man. You you need to be on there. Man, and, I, and, I, and I'm going to push. I'm going to push for you to be on I, there, man. I, I, I am. I am. I, I am. I'm going to push for I, you to I be actually on there. Did, I did have the opportunity to speak with Mr. Wright just this past okay, week. Okay, good. He was, he was good. He was very gracious and he gave me a call. It didn't last too long because, man, I'm just coming off a bad bout of COVID. And so he caught me uh, in the middle of that. And, and he's like, man, I'm going to have to give you a call next week. But I just wanted to touch base. And I had the opportunity when I spoke with them, I was just, just like, you know, I'm happy to put together something where, you know, I can kind of outline my findings in speaking with just dozens of people who are affected by this article. But the, the abiding thing that I want to, uh, to convey is just the spirit of people is that for so long, you know, for, for at least the past couple, couple decades, air workers feel for lost and forgotten about and you know we have an opportunity now with with leadership with new leadership to re-engage to demonstrate to people that you know it does matter if you participate it matters who you put in office and yeah. that uh, yeah. we just put some folks in, in office that uh, that they appear to be the real deal man and uh you know i'm I'm greatly encouraged at the outpouring of support that I have received so far from uh, from the rank and file. You know, we're we're now in like close to 40 cities and like 19 states, man. Okay, but, good. Know, I, I want I want I want even more than that, man. I want 100 cities and like 40 states, and, I'll, and then I'll be happy, man. And then we need to connect those efforts with what the IBT is doing, and and. Uh, uh, you know, anything that we can do to assist them in their existing goals and vision is only going to leave, you know, uh, all of us in a stronger position than we presently are. Absolutely. And, and we're going and we're going to push to, towards that. There's some stuff that you put on here and I'm trying to pull it up because uh, I want to talk about this, too. Um, some things that you put online. I like the, the graph that you have. Um, yeah, so people man. Can actually, and I have more, but I wanted to keep it short and sweet. I felt like that that graph uh, uh, it 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 spoke straight to the point, man. And that, and it wasn't it wasn't to drive any kind of division and say, hey, we deserve more than ground workers because we make more money. You know, ground workers work hard. We work hard. All right. we're trying to uh, uh, all we're trying to uh, we were trying to do with that is to draw attention to the fact that we are important to UPS's business model. And so why should the workers who are so important to UPS's business model have the worst conditions? There you go. That, 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 is, that is said perfectly. Um, UPS makes billions off of our labor. You, this is something that I learned, especially in this job, if you look at it. And I, and I actually heard labor managers say this. UPS doesn't make anything. They don't manufacture anything. 
They don't produce anything. Everything they have is because of us. Everything. You can't go into the store and pick up something that UPS made. You can't go. It's, it's not. So when they start talking all this stuff, you know, it, it, it just makes me cringe because everything that they have is dependent on us. And we have to make them realize that, especially coming up here in this next contract. UPS does not make anything. They don't manufacture anything. All they have is because of Mac. It's because of Greg. It's because of Nick Ruggiero, James Hughes, um, all these Jeff Leftowitz, all these, I could keep going on names and names and names. You know, those are the people that make them profits. Nothing they do, it, they don't make anything. They don't produce anything. So we have to remind them of that, especially you know, when the contract time come. And, you know, it's going to get hot and heavy. But yes, sir. <laughs> but I, but I, I know we're ready. I'm um, ready. I think I know, and 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 I can see us building toward something that is going to mirror what happened in '97. Now, does that mean we're going to strike? Who knows? Uh, but I think we need to be prepared okay. for more. Right. I don't think anybody don't wants to. to. Right. And, and I agree. I hope we don't have to, but we need to show them that if if the time comes, we'll just take them on the street. You know, if they want to talk all this nonsense, like they producing stuff and they making stuff. No, 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 no. It's us. It's not you. It's us. So um, let's see how you make it when we on the other side of the street. You know, let, let's see how that works. So let me ask you this question since we're talking about yeah, that. Sure. Um, do you do you think that we are going to go on strike with what you seeing and what you hearing um with the what what you have been uh getting for the article 40 what you've been watching with the new leadership and what ups is doing do you think a strike is inevitable you know i have tried to keep really close tabs on this in terms of the tone that uh corporate is taking and they are being very tight lipped um, yeah, yeah. You know, as as they do, the statements that they give w uh, with respect to anything regarding the union are, are uh, you know, it's 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 very tightly crafted, and they say the 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 same old stuff like we worked very successfully with the union for decades, yeah. and we expect to continue the same, and so is has been difficult to uh you know to to kind of try and get up inside their head but i i can i can tell you what man is that this whole the carol tomei's business model um depends on increasing the margins and when you have to think about the the you're you were exactly right when you said ups doesn't make or produce anything that all of the value all of the profit that is created by this company is made on the back of our labor. You know, her whole business model, and it's not just been a bargaining unit members either. It's been admin workers and uh, trimming the, uh, you know, I yeah. uh, uh, trimming the, the, the fat off of management as much as possible too. And like, I imagine that people all across the company, you know, feel like they're potentially kind of on the chopping block, man. It's it's kind of uh, a scary place to be right now in many respects. And so I I imagine, I imagine that when it comes down to it, you know, it, with her whole model not being on customer satisfaction, but on increasing value for the shareholders, that they are going to do everything they absolutely possibly can to ensure that 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 model is successful uh and you know i i have no doubt that there are contingency plans being put in place right now uh as as far as and and that's why the pvds were 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 such a mistake to ever let happen because we know yep. exactly who they're going to call they're going to they're going to hit those lists up and they're going to have they're going to have people in them left and right and so we've got to do something about that too yeah absolutely Absolutely. So I'm going to, because we got some questions about the website. Um, let me put this up in here. So everybody want to go to this website. It's fixedarticle40.com. Fixedarticle40.com. And I just want to read a couple of things on here. Mm -hmm. um, 
real quick. So what we want, and this is very, very important too, and I'm glad you added this on on this website. It's remove the preamble. A lot of people yes, don't we know didn't this. Talk about the preamble. No, I no we forgot. didn't. We didn't. So go ahead and talk about it. Cause I don't want to steal your thunder, man. Go ahead, talk about it. Yeah, sure, man. Look, Article 40 is real simple. Article 40 was conceived in 1987, and that was a moment in the American economy in which the rest of the logistics industry was rapidly building up its express delivery services. And you might have had an argument at the time that, you know, in order for UPS to, to keep pace, that, that Article 40 needed to have, you know, an exceptional uh, amount of flexibility. But good God, that was 35 years ago. We're the biggest, <laughs> right, right, we're the biggest right. logistics company in the world, you know? And, and there's just no reason for that to be there. It's got to go. And what eliminating it is going to do is it is going to enable uh, those, because there is a tremendous amount of diversity uh, ge geographically across operations in this country. And so the supplements absolutely based upon the character, uh, you know, the, those varying characteristics yep. should be able to uh, to bargain and negotiate and to get a better deal for themselves. And that's why that thing needs to get taken out of there. Right. And so like he did that last part, I want him, I want everybody to key in what he just said. It, Article 40 in, in the preamble, it restricts the local supplements or if you're in the region, whatever, it restricts them from kind of negotiating better terms on said article or for their air employees. Like for an example, um, we have so many air employees here, but there's nothing that we can do as a, a, as a local leadership um, because of the preamble in the contract which states that Article 40 uh, should no longer uh, supersede language on same subjects in supplements, writers, and addendas. Because right now, nothing in your supplement supersedes Article 40. That's the one of the only articles that in the national that will su supersede your supplement. And so that has to has to uh, be removed. Daily guarantee we talked about uh, making sure that all um, Air Hub and Gateway employees have the same um, uh, daily guarantee, and and with some some locals, uh, they don't even have a daily guarantee. It 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 it, it all depends on um, how many people work. <laughs> Eighty percent of the workforce working thirty days and forty five days, and all this other kind of stuff that has to be removed. Increase the daily guarantee. Um, get rid of this 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 preamble in Article 40, and then we also talked about ending the split pay in the combo air drivers. Nick Ruggiero, James Hughes used to be one. Um, like he just said, his pay dropped sixteen dollars an hour. Just think about that for a minute. Your pay dropping sixteen dollars an hour, even though you're a full time employee. I have I have no idea why that that that's still in there. Um, air drivers deserve overtime on a six punch, like ground drivers and and part time air drivers deserve OT after five hours, like other part timers. Some of the things that we got to fix, we have got to fix these issues. Uh, start times, um, given given uh, the air workers a proper notice of twenty four hours before they change the start time, and of course better starting pay and catch up raises and catch up raises that was my next thing and uh pension credit so again you can look at all these things on fixarticle40.com um listen everybody go to that that website it's beautiful it's a lot of things on here especially if you are if you are affected by this article if you are an air uh, air hub or gateway employee like like the, who's it said this here holiday pay all these things all right we need to make sure that we stand united on this all right uh every article is a problem there's something you can find in every article but this article here man it's been causing issues forever like brother matt said since 1987 man i was i was seven years old man when an article came in here seven years old Wow, but and that's the thing about it, man. If you if you allow things to keep staying the same, sooner or later, 
it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And now look at it now. Now look at it now. Four-year progression is the same thing. Four-year progressions. Like Nick, 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 Nick been getting busted up for a long time in this Article 40, man. Uh, uh, hey, Nick, uh, uh, we would uh, have to put you on that committee too, man. You and Matt. You and Matt. Cause, cause, that's uh, what's up. Yeah, man, I, I would love to see that, both of you gentlemen on there. Um, I think you guys got a got a lot of ideas on how we can change this article because it's 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 been it's been a disaster for so long and nothing's been happening. So we got about about ten minutes left because I don't want to keep you um longer than than needed, man. So so tell us how we can get in contact with you, Facebook, Instagram, Art Fix Article 40. Email, what you got for us? Yeah, sure, man. Um, on the Fix Article 40 website, you know, which is fixarticle40.com, you know, it does lay out our vision and our plan. And then at the bottom, there's a contact form. And, uh, you know, you just fill out your information and, uh, you know, your feedback of, you know, um, you, you can either get directly involved and you can you can lend us a hand in making uh, making sure this thing is seen through to completion or you know I realize not everybody can do that some folks are busy and if you just want to give your input about suggestions you know you can put that down in, in the bottom too. Uh, somebody mentioned in the comments that I have a article 40 Facebook group sort of what I am is I am in the uh, 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 part-time hourly workers at UPS group. And then there's like a subgroup in there. I think they used to call them like subgroups and now they call them like channels. And so there is a specific article 40 channel in there if you'd like to join it. But you know, at this point, I don't see why I don't just create an article 40 group. Yeah. I would be um, perfectly happy to do that. And um, once I do, um, I will, I will comment on this, this, I will come back up behind myself and comment on this post, uh, a bit later today and, um, and, and put the link to that, uh, down in there. And, um, you know, let me talk a little bit about what we need to, um, you know, our, we are only a month into this project and we have already proliferated to almost uh, 40 cities across 18 states. I want to continue to grow. I want to continue to bring uh, diverse experiences from, uh, from, from a large geographical area. Um, and so uh, what we need is people who can help us get into additional areas. Uh, if you know any other air workers, uh, you send them to us. Uh, you know, if, if you're willing to help us reach out to places, uh, contact us. But then we're, uh, eventually what we're also going to need is we are going to need folks who are willing to, and this is, this is going to be the hard part. You know, uh, we're going to need folks to sit down and dig into the contract language with us and to come up with viable solutions that can be adopted as language into the contract. And, uh, you know, right now um, we are at a deficit of that. And we also, this network is on the brink of becoming too large for me to handle myself. We could, we could use some additional people who are willing to help plan and coordinate. And so, you know, uh, those three things, planners, coordinators, people who are willing to dig into the contract language and folks who are just willing to provide input and let us know what kind of issues they're facing in their area and stuff that they want to see. Those are the three things that we need. Go to fixarticle40.com uh, uh, to contact us about it or and come back to the comments section of, uh, of, of this post later and I will have an Article 40 Facebook group linked. Brother, awesome. We appreciate you, man, for all that you that you're, all you're doing for us. Um, not just in the Article 40, but just being an active teamster. Just being an active teamster. Not an active part-timer or active this or active that. An active teamster, man. We need more active teamsters who are willing to do the grind and fight against corporate America, corporate greed. I, for one, man, this, this, is, this, is, just, this, this, this is just a breath of fresh air to see young people, um, part-timers, just get more involved in this, this, this fight, this, this, this struggle, this war, um, because we can win it if we get more people to participate. 
Uh, and we appreciate you, man, for what you're doing, man. Let me let me talk about that just real quick for a second because okay. you know I didn't talk a whole lot about myself, and you know, um, so I'm gonna spend a minute doing that. I've only been at UPS for like four and a half years. Wow, like, get out I'm, of here! I am not like some like. There is nothing about me that is particularly special, Richard. Like there's there's nothing that uniquely uniquely qualifies me to be doing what I'm doing right now other than I'm here and I care right now in this moment. And, and that is a statement to everybody else. You don't have to be anybody. You don't need anybody's permission, you know, to, to, to try and get something going on. We have an opportunity with new leadership that wants to connect uh, to, to the members and wants to give voice to the membership. Let's take it. You can just be an, an ordinary ass dude or lady. You know? oh, man, I, I, I love you, man. You speaking to my heart right now, man. You speaking to my heart. Um, I appreciate what you just said. You don't need anybody's permission. You don't. Just, just, just grind. Go out to your, 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 your union meetings. Go out to your contract meetings. Um, listen to um, um, your, your stewards, your business agents. Get involved in this thing. Right. Um, I hear people talk about it's like a, a gym membership. You know, uh, you have you paying for the membership and not going is not helping. Members pay a lot of money um, to their leaders and to the international and to their conferences and to the joint council. Um, make sure you get involved in what your dues money is doing. Get involved because the money comes out. You need, you need to follow your money. You need to follow what's going on. You need to go to your union meetings. Go to your contract meetings. Like our brother just said, you don't need permission. You don't. Just get involved. He's a four and a half year member. He's already actively involved in trying to make the union better, stronger. You know, and that's what all of us need to do. Um, and, and brother, I love it, man. You, you pulled in my heart on that one, man. Uh, so I'm going to push for you to get on that article for the uh, committee. I may get in some trouble, but I'm going to push. I'm going to push to get you uh, on there, uh, man. Right on, man. I, I don't mind getting you. in. Hey, listen. These guys will tell you, I don't mind getting in trouble. I've been in trouble for a little <laughs> while now. So, <laughs> a so little, I'm a little bit of trouble is okay. Just a little bit, though. Right. But it's good trouble. Like John Lewis said, right. man, you got to get in some good trouble. So uh, the trouble I get in is good, even though people don't like it. But it's all right. Um, right. Brother, I appreciate you so much, man. Thank hey, you I for all you. Yeah, I ain't no problem, man. Listen, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for speaking truth to power. Thank you for the engagement process, the 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 education that you're providing, man. We we thank you for it. Um, I'm I'm kind of mad, man, that we got to get out of here, man, because <laughs> it's about a, we, and the hour went, went by fast, man. That was that was a good yeah. hour, but uh, we're gonna yeah, do this sure again. Do. Hopefully by next time, I'll have the whole Zoom stream set up i just i just opened it up today and i gotta get dean doss to, to, to walk me through it, how to do it so next time we have this conversation um we could have you and nick and other people that are passionate and about article 40 and just have all these ideas out so other people can hear them and then we can come up with a plan and a strategy and that vision that we talked about in the beginning to uh fix this article 40. All right, good brother. Hey, man, thank you so much. Any closing comments? Uh, closing comments, man. I, I don't know that I can say anything that, had, that hadn't already been said, man, other than I, I super appreciate you. Um, I, I am really grateful for all of the support that I've received so far, um, you know, especially for Rosie Stadronsky out in, in Ontario um, uh, with all of the advice and the help that she's given me and connect with various resources. Um, just continues to, to, to stay involved, man. Like this, this is, this is potentially the dawn of a new era and people let's not forget that, you know, it's just about, you know, what you decide to do with it. There you go. There you, man, you, you dropping some, some, some nuggets today, man. You uh, dropping uh, them, uh, you dropping them on us today, man. Rosie, thank you for introducing us to this brother, man. Wealth of knowledge. Um, only been here four and a half years, already involved. 
I know my man, he's going, he's going to, he's, this is not his, his ending. This is just the beginning for him. I'm looking forward to see what um, God continues to do in your life and how you educate all of us in this, not just Article 40, but just just in, 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 the, in the whole Teamster realm in general. So we're going to get out of here, man. Maybe in about a month or so, we can do this again. Because I don't want, what I don't want to happen is that we just do this one time and then people forget. Oh, no, this want, is going to be a sustained push, man. The whole yeah. goal is to make this thing too big to yes. ignore. People are going to keep yeah. hearing about it whether they'd like to or not. So, and, and that, you know, and that is uh, the plan. We'll dog ear that, and we'll revisit this in a few weeks. Awesome. And um, I, I'll have the whole setup to get up Zoom stream. We can bring in Greg, Rosie, Dean. Definitely got to bring my man Nick Ruggiero in. Um, you know, and hopefully we may can get um, – um, uh, Brother Wright, James Wright, we'll see if we can get him on too, you know, to hear his thoughts and how we can can fight all, you know, fight this together, man, because I, I really want to help him. I really want to help him, man. I really want to help him, you know, fix this Article 40. All right. All right, good brother. It was good to hear you, brother. Thank you. All right. Thank you. It was a pleasure. It was all mine, man. You have a good thank afternoon. You. you as well. You as well. Man, that was awesome. That was awesome. That was awesome. That's probably one of the best um, shows we had, man. I'm I'm pumped up, guys. I don't know about you, man. I feel like running around this this hotel right now, man. I'm so pumped up. But we're going to get out of here. Uh, appreciate you guys for, for watching. I'll be back around about 5 o'clock. Um, me and Chris, we're going to do we're going to do a show. Uh, recapping um, the TNBC and some things that we learned there and, you know, how we plan on moving that organization forward. Shout out to Brother Kirby for doing a great job out there as well at the uh, TNBC conference um, a couple weeks ago, man. I'm, I'm, I don't know, man. I'm pumped up about this Article 40, man. I really am. And so I got to get with Dean, man, to see how he can help me out with this streaming and uh, Hector and all them guys because, um, you know, I'm not um, – <laughs> I'm not a technological person, man. So we're gonna we're gonna figure it out though. All right, good people, we love you. Don't forget, if you are a 623 member, September the 25th is our next um general membership meeting. I need everybody to come out. We've been hearing all kinds of stuff all summer. Uh we need to put all that stuff to bed, focus on Kara Tomei and her band of Midfits, and let's go ahead. And win this contract for our members. All right. I'll see you in a few more hours. God bless you. Love you guys. And we will talk to you here very, very soon.